Is there any gaming genre left untouched by George Lucas' imagination? The shooter has been hijacked several times already, and the rating continues with the release of Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron. This multiplayer team-based shooter is exclusive to the PSP, and in a lot of ways, it's an improvement over prior console iterations of the series. Players get to experience the glorious and, until now, unsung exploits of Renegade Squadron. Throughout the 11 single-player missions, Renegade Squadron touches upon several major battles from Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, like Hoth and the Battle of Endor. Players will also fight their way through missions taking place all over the Star Wars universe. They tie in nicely with the source material, and key battles are approached from a different perspective and manage to keep players from feeling like they're just replaying key scenes from the movies for the tenth time. Renegade Squadron has several new features mixed in with some familiar ones from earlier titles. New to Renegade Squadron is an actual single-player campaign. This serves as a nice introduction to the basic gameplay, which has gotten quite an overhaul. Perhaps the biggest change is the complete removal of character classes. Players no longer choose what kind of soldier they want to be from a preset list. Instead, each player is assigned 100 credits that are used to buy weapons and abilities. And there are a lot of weapons and abilities for players to mix and match. Someone interested in capturing bases might opt for extra speed, quicker base capturing ability, and a stealth suit at the expense of some of the heavier weapons. A player interested in using vehicles might buy the increased vehicle repair ability. Because you only have 100 credits to purchase equipment, there's no way to outfit yourself with the best of everything. Basic blasters are pretty good all-around weapons. Tougher targets might require thermal detonators or maybe a good old-fashioned rocket or grenade launcher. Balancing out the numerous weapons is a host of special abilities and equipment, like jetpacks, personal shields, auto turrets, and extra health. The turn-based Galactic Conquest mode returns for people more interested in the single-player game. But the big news in Renegade Squadron is the inclusion of full-featured online multiplayer for up to 16 players. This was something that was sorely missing from Battlefront 2, and honestly, pretty inexcusable given the fact that the Battlefront games are really all about the multiplayer. But now, all is forgiven. Just get your PSP near a Wi-Fi connection, register for a free account, and you're in. LucasArts has a number of dedicated servers open, and there are plenty of players to hook up with. In addition to the standard conquest mode, where teams attempt to take control of capture points on one of 11 different maps, there are several flavors of Capture the Flag, including the brand new Hero Capture the Flag mode, where each team has a hero used for flag defense. There's also an assault mode that is exclusive to the outer space maps. These maps now allow players to land their fighters on capital ships and space stations to continue the battle on foot. <laughs> One of the other major changes from Battlefront 2 is the default controls. Renegade Squadron now uses a lock-on button to help players score more hits than misses. This is an improvement over typical console shooting controls that never really work well on the PSP thanks to just one control stick. At first, the lock-on feature makes the game seem too easy, especially if you're playing against AI opponents. But once you're in the fray with other human beings, you'll quickly discover the roll button, which breaks any lock-on targeting. Just running in and circle strafing your enemies won't work for long. There are just too many ways to counter it. You'll really learn to love the classless character system, as it gives players a lot more flexibility in how they approach each battle. Despite improvements in character control, the vehicles still feel really clumsy whether you're driving a tank, a tauntaun, or an ATSD. Weapons fire from said vehicles is woefully imprecise. The space maps are a bit of a wash as well. Being able to land your craft and fight through small sections of the capital ships is pretty cool, but the actual space combat almost always ends up being two ships chasing after each other in circles. Although you probably won't spend much time with the single-player campaign, the story unfolds nicely through a series of beautifully animated storyboards punctuated by a well-voiced narrative. The rebellion's been over a long time. Maybe it's time people knew about Renegade Squadron and what we did back then. The in-game visuals are not up to par. They aren't bad, but many of the characters and environments are blocky and pixelated. Obviously, some concessions had to be made in order to get the 16-person multiplayer running smoothly, but it's hard to make out certain items like health packs and turrets on the ground. On the space maps, most of the smaller ships just look like grayish blobs. 
Snippets of the John Williams timeless soundtrack are everywhere, no matter what mode you're playing. And it wouldn't be a Star Wars game without it. Although not everything works perfectly in Renegade Squadron, the most important feature in the game, the online multiplayer, is great. If you're interested in the single-player components, you will come away disappointed, even with all of the different gameplay modes. Without online play, this would be a hollow shell of a game. With it, you're in for one great time on your PSP.